So recently, I finished a show called the Tomodachi game, and I'm not gonna lie, it hit different. It was so fire. When I was younger, I was like a crackhead looking for his next hit. I would watch anything, any anime without looking at any details, no trailer, no synopsis. I wouldn't even know if it was good or bad, I would just watch it. So I'm going in blind to all of these animes, and a lot of the time, like a lot of the time, they are bad, they are trash. So now I finally made a change on how I find my anime at the big age of 47 with two kids. So what I do now is I pick 3-4 to four well known anime that I know is going to be good because everyone is watching it and everyone gave the manga good reviews. And this season, one of those animes happened to be Tomodachi Game. So I fell in love with Tomodachi Game on episode 1 and every single week after that I had euphoric moans after an episode ended. What I'm trying to say is that shit slapped. That shit was busted. So when I finished that show, I was left with a hole in my heart. But then I realized there's a manga. So I binged the entire manga in three days. So now I'm caught up with the manga, waiting for monthly chapters. And there's, a, there's still an itch. There's an itch and a hole in my heart. So I was looking for something, anything that remotely resembled Tomodachi game. I was like a goddamn sniffer dog looking for cocaine. I needed another genius, another genius manipulator, so I'm searching until I finally find Classroom of the Elite. It had a lot of similarities so I knew it might start to fill the empty void inside of my soul. There are two reasons why I wanted to start watching Classroom of the Elite. Wow. I needed to see another big brain bozo completely manipulate all of his friends for my entertainment. The second season of Classroom of the Elite is airing now. So I am going to be watching the first season of Classroom of the Elite and finding all the menacing, interesting and entertaining moments throughout the season. After finding the most enjoyable and fun moments throughout the season, I'm going to be comparing my thoughts and feelings towards Yuichi, the protagonist of Tomodachi game, and Ayano Koji, the protagonist of Classroom of the Elite. So with that being said, I have a lot of love for Yuichi. Hey, yo! But hopefully, after watching Classroom of the Elite, I'll have a lot of love for Koji too. Yeah. By the way, before we get into this absolutely heavenly event of watching Ooh. Classroom of the Elite, I'm going to be calling Ayano Koji, just Koji, if that's cool with you guys. Okay, let's begin. So our boy Koji pulls up to the most prestigious school where only the most intelligent and elite students have a chance to attend. If you graduate from this school, you have a 100% success rate at any job you want. <laughs> So he tries entering the school, but he's blocked by some Sundari girl, and she just starts mad disrespecting him for no reason. Not gonna lie, I'm not a fan of Sundari. It's not like I like you or anything, headass. So they start showing some of the side characters, but damn. He has a butt chin and a butt head. Like, bro, God does not love you. So their homeroom teacher pulls up, and I didn't know she was a bad bitch. Like, whoa, I'd have watched this earlier. She starts giving out important information like you can never ever leave campus or make contact with the outside world once you're here. But they have like cinemas and theatres and pools just inside the campus. So there's a point system where every single student gets 100k each month if they think you're worth it. She also says that you can buy anything inside the campus. So we find out the name of the infamous Sundari. Her name is Horikita. So the entire class is spending all of their money on Nintendo Switches and the new iPhone 47. They're all getting dripped out the wazoo like that Goku wearing Supreme. But Horikita and Koji have barely spent any of their points. So the most popular girl in the class, Kushida, is asking Koji for a favour. She wants to be friends with everyone in the class but Sundari chan is not having any of it. Bro, what is he looking at? Koji is down astronomically, and that's coming from me. I am down bad. I admit that. So the class keeps spending and spending all of their points, using their phone in class, being disruptive, and just damn right not listening. And the teacher, she never punishes them. But finally, a month goes by. So they check their phones and they realize that they have not been paid their 100k a month. So some kid puts his hand up and he's like, what the hell? Teach, where's my money at? And she just starts violating them. She's like, you guys are like borderline mentally deficient. You pathetic worms thought you'd be paid for doing nothing. This school judges on merit alone. But as it stands now, you guys are all garbage. Worth nothing, you get nothing. But I low-key think Koji saw through it because he kept most of his points. Damn, they be jiggling. So trusted you. 
So there are four classes in each year. Class A, B, C and D. Class A being the best class and Class D being the worst class. And Koji is in Class D. The classes have a point system. So they have to earn more points than Class C to become the new Class C. If you fail any midterms or finals, you get expelled. Damn, they could not make that room any more suspicious. Like, just turn the light on. We know you're the antagonist. Hovikita has been a cold-hearted Sundari for this entire episode, but now she's showing a glimpse of emotion because her big brother is roasting the fuck out of her. So he pins his little sister up against the wall. He says you have put shame upon this family by being in class D. Bro was about to palm strike his own sister but Koji came in clutch. Bro I didn't know they were throwing hands like this, what the hell? I thought this was a school anime. And against all odds, all of class D passed their tests and apparently no one's gonna get expelled. Look at this dude, bro is so down bad he is shifting through dimensions. Hovakita isn't stupid so she's like how did you get these dumb dopey dumbasses to pass this test? So Koji got an upperclassman's old test that he did two years before and it had similar questions so they were able to cheat off of it. But the only reason they were able to get it is because he's yet another simp in this show. Meanwhile Atachi's trying to get a new shelling gun or something. She's like, hey, 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 may I remind you, I'm a snitch ass nigga, no collecting shower guns on campus. So we go back to present day and teacher's like, I'm surprised you baboon minded baby ass niggas managed to pass, let alone get high scores. But angry, angry basketball guy, you failed. So basketball guy, pseudo, is going to get expelled, but Koji has a plan. Koji starts haggling. On the first day, the teacher said anything on the campus can be bought with points, including extra marks for pseudo so he doesn't get expelled. Bro, what? Horikita pulled out his shank, like what? Is this South London? So Koji is following Kushida to give back her phone, but then he catches some outrageous activities from her. She's throwing out death threats to Horikita because she thinks she's prettier than her. Damn. Then Koji gets caught. She's like, Koji, if you tell anyone about my black air force activities, I will say that you forcefully clap my cheeks. So Koji's like, you have no proof, no one will believe you. So then she grabs his hands and puts it on her chest. And Koji is secretly the most thirsty and down bad person on this show. He could have moved his hand at any time, but he chose to do it. He knew what he was getting into. So Koji agrees to never tell anyone. And she just goes back to being a cute kawaii anime girl. So Sudo, the guy that almost got exploded before, is getting in trouble again because he literally like brain cells. He beat the crap out of three guys but he said they started it. So they found a witness that can prove that Sudo isn't lying but she doesn't want to testify because she's an up and coming EFOT, the next Belle Delphine. <laughs> they go to trial without her to try and clear Sudo's name. Sakura the witness pulls up and shows them images to prove Sudo's innocence. But for some reason she keeps her dirty E4 images on there instead of deleting them and shows them to the entire audience. But even though he didn't start it, he's not going to get expelled but he is going to get suspended for 2 weeks so they have to find even more proof. This is the reason why I watched the show, Koji is so smart. He meets up with the people that said Sudo attacked them, then he points out cameras on each wall showing what really happened and the school has a no lying policy in this situation. So Koji the mad lad says the school already knows what you guys have done, they're just seeing if you would lie so they can expel you. Then he says if you retract your statement, the school won't have a reason to expel you for lying and they will have to suspend Sudo. So they agree, but this was all a part of his plan. He made Horikita buy fake cameras to trick those guys. The school knew nothing. So those guys go back to the person that made them do it, their boss, the leader of class C. Then he gets a big black guy to beat them up because they didn't follow through with the plan. We find out that Koji was raised like some government lab or something. Horikita asks him questions about his past and this is the first time in 6 episodes he has shown a hint of emotion. He said I will help you get to class A but don't ever pry into my past. Things start to chill out, all year 1 classes are on a boat for a unique test, a test for points. This is so diabolical, one of class C's students was talking smack to the leader so one of his henchmen just grabs her and tosses her to the side like she's a ragdoll. So we reach the destination and the test is that everyone will be left on a deserted island. Each class is a group and each group has to pick one leader. But if the enemy groups guess your leader, then you lose loads of points and they gain loads of points. Class D does not want to pick someone obvious, so they end up picking Horikita as their leader. But when they go out scouting, they see the girl that got thrown like a pinata. Apparently she's been kicked out of class C and left to starve because of her behaviour earlier. 
So Koji being the upstanding gentleman that he is, he takes her back to the camp, which is a really bad idea because she could be a spy. If you're hurt, sick, or have any reason to go back to the ship, you can go back at any time, but you lose your entire class 30 points. This a armor looking freak decided to go back to the boat for no reason and cost class D 30 points. Last bit of information, but all leaders have a key card with their name on it. So they go out scouting yet again, but this time they see the bold headed guy from class A holding a key card, but they don't know if it's a bait or trick to make them lose points, or if he's the leader and they've actually found him out. Then we travel to the leader of class C and they're all just partying, apparently they used all of their points. Then he says that he doesn't want to ruin his summer and he's just going to go back to the boat after they're done partying. So Koji wants to confirm if class A's key card is real or not, so he asks Horikita to show him her key card. And some dumbass just puts mud on it for no reason. Never mind he's not a dumbass, Bro was tactically thinking he knew we would get this shot, he's for the boys. Then the worst chain of events that happened to class D happens. Horikita brings Koji out to the forest and she's like, uh, I kinda lost my key card. Which means at least one other team definitely knows who their leader is. But it gets worse, there's a fire in the camp burning almost everything. But well, Horikita notices something, the blue haired girl that they took in earlier is nowhere to be seen, so she goes after her. So she finally catches up to her and she's like, oh can I uh, search your bag? You're kinda suspicious you know, you're kinda sus. And the blue haired girl, she's actually listening, so she puts her bag down and then just throws some dirty kick. Where are these students learning these like, black belt level martial arts at the age of like 16? Where are they learning this from? So Horikita gets knocked the fuck out. But then blue haired girl reveals the keycard to someone, but we don't know who it is. Because of Horikita's injuries and a fever, Koji brings her back to the boat and makes her drop out. And with that being said, the test is ended. Every team has to write down who they think the other leaders are. But it turns out not all of Class C e pulled out. The leader of Class C e stayed on the island. So we find out that Class C e was working with Class A the entire time. But Class C's leader double crosses Class A because he found out who their leader is. So even though you lose 30 points for each class member that goes back onto the boat, you could not go into the minuses, meaning that if Class C's leader is able to guess any of the other leaders, then he will be in the positives. So the announcing of the test results is here. In fourth place is Class C. In third place is Class A. In second place is Class B. And in first place, somehow, is Class D. So everyone starts freaking out on how they got first place, but Horikita knows how, so she tries to chase him down for answers. I'm so glad I watched this. Koji planned everything. So the reason why Class A and C got such low points is because you can change your leader if you have a valid reason to, like Horikita being injured and extremely sick. So his next 2000 IQ play was that he knew that the blue haired girl was a spy so he made Horikita show him the card in front of her. Then told that guy to throw mud on her so that the blue haired girl would have a chance to steal it. Then he set fire to his own camp so that the spy would have a distraction to leave. And all of this was so that the other classes lose points for putting the wrong name down. Then Koji the menace with a single glance managed to find out class A's true leader. Then for class C he saw a radio next to class C's leader. The same type of radio the spy was using. And the only way they could be communicating is a Class C's leader is still on the island. Bro worked all of that out so easily. But Class B and Class D have a good relationship, so he didn't go after them. He doesn't want to be in the spotlight ever, so he gave all of the fame to Horikita and everyone thinks she did all of it. Even though she was just a pawn. Oh my god, this scene is so devastating bro, look. Horikita is like, I cherish you as a friend and an ally, and this is his response. Thanks for your help. Not that I need you or anything, I am fine without you. But Horikita, I've never considered you an ally. Not even for a second. Not you. Not Kushida. Not Hirata. People are nothing but tools to me. All of them. I don't care what I have to do to win. I don't care what I have to sacrifice. In this world, winning is everything. And in the end, I'm going to win. There is no way. I thought he just couldn't express emotion. I didn't know he was a straight up sociopath. That is one of the best reveal endings to the first season of any anime. That was so good. 
I'm so glad Tomodachi Game brought me to this anime. But with that being said, now I have to compare the two. Classroom of the Elite is such a slow burner compared to the fast pace of Tomodachi Game. What I mean by that is Tomodachi Game has frequent exciting moments whereas Classroom of the Elite builds up on one big moment and then has an explosion of excitement. But I think I'm gonna have to give it to Tomodachi Game because I think I had more enjoyment throughout the season than this. Then there's Yuichi and Koji themselves. Both characters are shrouded with mystery. With Yuichi's mystery being, is he good or is he truly evil? And with Koji, what did they do to him when he was a child to make him like this? I've heard people call Koji bland, but I don't think that's true. Yes, he doesn't express emotion, but because of that, it makes him unique and enjoyable. And then there's Yuichi. Yuichi expresses himself a lot. A lot. But if I'm just using the first season of Classroom of the Elite and Tomodachi game, I'm gonna have to give brains to Koji and enjoyment to Yuichi. So overall, I think Tomodachi Game Season 1 left more of an impact than Classroom of the Elite. But I still love Classroom of the Elite, so I'll be making a second season video when all of the episodes are out. But if I had to give both animes a number out of 10, I would give Tomodachi Game an 8 out of 10 and Classroom of the Elite a 7.5 out of 10. And if you made it this far, please like and subscribe. My next video will probably be on Overlord, so watch out for that. See ya.